Hello, hi and welcome. It's another vlog situation. It's a week in review basically. And I had big plans, such big plans for this vlog because I went on a little adventure this week. Sort of an adventure that you might not be used to seeing if you follow me on Instagram, which is that I went to Reading, I went to John Lewis Reading and I was hosting a series of fashion talks with one of their personal stylists and I thought, this is gonna be great. I can do a get ready with me. I can do with this, that and the other. And essentially what happened was there was a train strike, so what should have been a fairly straightforward journey to Reading became somewhat complicated, convoluted and extended. Um, and to set up a camera and film my makeup when I was a little bit worried about whether I would get there on time just felt a little indulgent. So I didn't do that. I did capture some footage on the way. So I'm going to take you, take you with me a little bit, but I'm also going to show you some of the styling. So I was in a personal styling suite there and they were amazing because Gemma, the stylist, styled me. She styled me into, I think it was five outfits to choose from for the presentations. But I also just said, well, should we play? And I can just do some filming. And I got carte blanche across the entire fashion department to just pick and choose and put things together. So I will show you some of the outfits that I put together um, a little later on. But what I'm going to do um, whilst, well not whilst, but what I'm going to do as well is Bobby Brown were there. Bobby Brown got an amazing concession at um, the Reading store. And the Reading store is beautiful. It's a very old building, but it's fast. It was huge. Um, actually, really, really beautifully laid out store. But the lovely team at Bobby Brown um, came up to me at the end of the day and gave me a box of goodies. Um, excuse me. Also, with a heart-shaped note. Can we all agree this is just class personified? So what I thought I would do in lieu of taking you on my journey with me and get ready with me for a day in Reading, I'm going to go through the products that they gave me and I'm going to put them on my face and um, we can see what we think. But before we do that, I'm just going to share um, a little bit of my journey to Reading, which was easier than I thought, but still quite the challenge. Uh, just, just extended, not difficult, just took a lot longer than it should have done. But it was quite good fun and it was worth it. It was so worth it. And in this clip as well, I'm going to splice in some of the outfits. Uh, maybe we'll see what we put together a little bit in the personal shopping room and I will also link to all of those outfits in the comments below, in the, not the comment, in the caption below so that if you are so inclined you can try them for yourself. Also head over to Instagram because I did a, a few reels on there about all of the looks but here's, here's a little snippet from my day in Reading. It was all going so well. I am on my way to John Lewis Reading for an event. I'm really looking forward to this today because it's three sessions, 12, one and two, and I'm working with a personal stylist to just go through all the autumn winter trends, all of the incredible like fashion picks and styles that are available at John Lewis. And just really, for anyone who comes along, he's gonna get a glass of champagne to boot. Um, just talk through like some little updates you can make to your wardrobe or like some major overhauls. I mean, I think it could go from like a tiny little adjustment to full-blown makeover situation. So the I'm train really excited. Now approaches platform two does not stop here. Stand clear but, of the platform as the approaching train does not stop there's here. a train strike today and so getting to John Lewis in Reading has not been difficult because but it has just involved two buses two tubes and now the Elizabeth line and the Elizabeth line is like great Elizabeth line stops at Reading well it does but the train that I got on doesn't and there is now I had to get off and there is now a 25 minute wait for the next train. So... Buy me dinner first. Um, so yes, so this is just a little, nice little stop on the way, but I'm excited to see everyone today and excited to work with Gemma the stylist there because I think she, I can tell from like looking at her social media, she's got really good pics and I just said to her, let's just play, I'll get there, you can dress me, do whatever you like. So uh, let's see what she does. So I'm in the personal styling dressing area and lovely Gemma has picked out a load of outfits for me and we've just gone around the store and just picked out some other bits that I wanted to try to show you. So we're gonna have a little bit of a try on now. 
Okay, so this is the number one that Gemma has picked out. Gemma was just off camera, but she's welcome to join me. This is Gemma from John Lewis Wedding and Personal Hi. Styling. <laughs> if you want to hear from her or work with her, then just come to John Lewis Wedding. But this is the first look that we have, or she has pulled out for me. So we've got a wide leg jean. Yes. We've got some gold trainers, um, a crisp white shirt, and let's face it, every wardrobe should have one. It's an essential. And we've just... Sleeves up, yeah. tucks it in, and then this leopard belt just to bring everything together. I mean, yeah. perfect look, totally easy. Yeah. Smarten up, smarten down. Yeah. And it's really quite a versatile look, so you could wear this throughout the year as well. Like going into the season, into autumn, popping like a nice yes. wool coat over the shoulders. It will look really lovely in yes. like a coat moment. But you can also wear this into the summer as well because it's such a versatile piece. Love it. Gorgeous. So, okay, so the team at Bubba Brown put together this incredible box of goodies. So there's a combination of skincare and makeup in here. So let's just play with it all. First thing, let's look at skincare. Okay, so I have um, the vitamin enriched eye base and face base. So it makes sense to start with those. I've always really loved Bobby Brown skincare because, because Bobby's background is as a makeup artist. I also like having long nails though, because I feel like I can take out the perfect amount of eye cream whenever I need it. Uh, because Bobby's got that, see this is it, it just yields to the touch. It is so incredibly sort of buttery soft. Um, and Bobby is an incredible makeup artist. And so when she was developing all of these products, it really is about skincare that is compatible with um, with makeup so that everything works really well together nothing's fighting each other and everything just looks as beautiful as it can on the skin this is the vitamin enriched face base um, God, this is really taking me back I have to be completely honest now this is quite thick this is almost I mean this is sort of imagine you know how I called the last texture buttery this is buttery if you're sort of whipping icing sugar into it there's sort of a thickness to it it doesn't smell sweet, it just has a, a lovely scent. Sorry, I know it's annoying to keep looking up, I just want to check that it's not losing focus, because it lost focus last week. Um, oh, oh, I just want to hug my face with this. This is such a delicious, and also, on a tired face like mine, we'll talk about that in a minute, it feels really, really indulgent, luxurious, but comforting. It's got a lovely fresh smell as well, which, not massively into fragrance in my skincare, but that is a treat. Bobby Brown very kindly put in a vitamin enriched skin tip with an SPF of 15, but I would always wear a much uh, a higher SPF factor. So I've just used an SPF 50 on my face and neck, but we are going to get stuck into this. I don't think I've used this for such a long time. Vitamin and Rich Skin Tint SPF. They very kindly shared medium with me. Now, I'm going to apply this with my fingertips. Although, because I've just applied SPF, I can get to no purchase. Oh, there we go. On that lid, okay. I'm gonna apply with my fingertips. I find with skin tints, or with the sort of thinner formulas, I'm much happier applying them with fingers. Oh, that's a really nice match. God, they're so good there. Um, I just 
think it 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 works best with the format to sort of rub and pat in to get the coverage um, with tint because the pigment is so is in smaller supply I always think that you're going to lose it in brushes or sponges which you can sort of you can cope with when it's a foundation but when it's a skin tint you kind of want it all and this is really ideal because I'm very um, I was gonna say tired but that's such a cliche isn't it I just feel a bit crusty today I'm just going to put a smidge more on it's usually the center of my face that needs it but today is one of those days where everywhere feels like it needs the attention yeah just feel a bit crusty yesterday was fantastic there was a lot of travel time which is absolutely fine but obviously that traveling can be draining especially when there's lots of chopping and changing that was my first time on the elizabeth line though which i actually really enjoyed beautiful if you haven't been on it it was very very nice um but also this week has been a really really busy week okay let's look at what we've got here we've got some oh we've got some hot rouge we've got a lip pencil and we've got a brow pencil okay fabulous so we have got pot rouge for lips and cheeks in calypso coral and fresh melon let's have a look at these this is normally to be honest a skin tint and sort of a sheer liquid or cream blush is my go-to sunday makeup because i hope beyond all hope that i can sort of get away with it so i'm thinking i'm inclined to say this one but i wonder if you're going to see it on camera so i'm going to go for this one um actually even though it's a format that screams please use your fingers with me i've never loved using I, I've always preferred to use cream blushes with a brush. I just feel as though I get more, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I just feel as though I have a little bit more control. I'm not very good at finger painting products onto my face unless it is something like a foundation. So let's stipple so there's a decent amount on the brush. And then If it looks haphazard, it's because it is. But as a makeup artist said to me many years ago, I'm just going to pinch the brush to apply on my eyelids as well. A makeup artist once said to me years ago, blend is your friend. So never get too worried about a look until you have blended. Then with a clean, dry brush, Just work all of that in, so it's a bit more seamless. Ooh. That is just very fresh and, and pretty, which I appreciate hugely. Okay, so I have been feeling a little bit guilty, truth be told, because I had such a lovely day at John Lewis and I came back and I posted a reel with um, me trying on all these different outfits. Gemma had very kindly styled me. And I became aware, like some lovely people in my DMs on Instagram kind of got in touch. And I, I realized that maybe not a sensitivity chip, but I sometimes forget. Well, I don't forget actually. I'm sort of acutely aware of it, but I forget about other people's experiences. I'm acutely aware of my own experience, but I sometimes forget what it can feel like to uh, feel excluded by fashion. And by that I mean to want to buy lovely things, to want to wear clothes and to feel glamorous or to feel a certain way because that's what fashion can do. This is the vitamin enriched pressed powder in yellow. Oh, I might leave that till the end actually. I've got some things to do first. This is Let's go in with this lip pencil in Pale Mauve. Um, well, there's a lip pencil in Pale Mauve and there's also 
a lip gloss in love letter. Oh, let's do this instead. Um, so, yes, I sometimes forget that I too have been in that place where I would go into shops and the clothes didn't fit me. Or if they fit me, they fit me and they were so uncomfortable, but I'd be so relieved that they fit that I'd buy them anyway. Like just getting a zip up, I'd be like, well, it fits me, it must be for me, I will have it. And obviously I've talked at length on the podcast about weight issues, eating disorders, body dysmorphia, body image, and what I sort of suddenly realized was it has been a long journey for me. I have worked extremely hard on my mental and emotional issues around and with food, and I have also worked really hard to uh, move my body in a way that supports the goal that I wanted to achieve. And, but I also remember what it was like to see somebody just enjoying fashion on social media and think, well, that's all right for you. And so I sort of been wrestling with that. I also didn't sleep very well last night. You get quite wired after, I don't know if anyone else who does them, I always have done. When you do anything sort of public facing, any events, whether it's TV, whether it's presenting, hosting, I'm always wired afterwards for a good few hours. It's honestly, come home from an event and that's when there's a deep clean or that's when something gets organized because there's just a flurry of activity. I honestly don't know how Taylor Swift does it. Um, when she, honestly, side note, but also seriously, how do you come off stage and then chill out? It must take a couple of days to come down from 60,000 people singing your songs back at you, but anyway. And so I was, couldn't sleep and I was mulling it over and I just thought, I wanted to sort of acknowledge that it can, I could imagine from the outside it would look like I used to moan about it and now I don't and now I'm like, look at me in this outfit and look at me in that outfit. So I... And, and it, it, just to be really honest with you, every single time I put on a pair of trousers or a skirt or a shirt and they zip up or they do up and it's not a battle and I haven't broken out into a sweat, it's still a bit of a shock to me because I have more experience of not fitting into clothes than I do, not fitting into the clothes I would like than I have of fitting into the clothes I would like. And I think about being a teenager and desperately wanting to go to Topshop and it was just, it just wasn't for me because the larger size simply didn't fit and if it did fit, it didn't look great. And so as a teenager, for me back in the 90s, it was sort of going into the much older stores, the sort of the Evans and the things that were for women, not for girls who wanted to be trendy. So uh, final, uh, final item is the perfectly defined long wear brow pencil in rich brown, so let's play with that as well. Um, so I did want to acknowledge that because I think it just, I just didn't want to appear to be insensitive or to just sort of say, yeah, this is, this is it now, yeah, I don't think about it anymore. I really, really do. And I think anyone who has had those sorts of issues, sort of, it lingers because it's attached to a lot of negative feelings and what have you. So that was something that I was really wanting to, to mention because I just think from the outside, if you didn't know the story or if you hadn't followed me for very long and you saw me trying all these clothes and you're in that place where you're having the experience of not being able to or feeling as though fashion excludes you or feeling as though you can't enjoy fashion in the way that you would like to because primarily fashion for you is about camouflaging, which is definitely what it used to be about for me and about hiding, then I really feel you and I absolutely know how crappy that can feel and how disappointing those shopping trips can be and how you end up seeing all these wonderful things that you want and you come away with things that just don't really work for you. Um, and I think that's why a few years ago when I did my wardrobe edit as part of 26 Habits and I whittled everything down to 33 items, um, I think that's why when I did an audit of everything there were like 35 white t-shirts because a white t-shirt would always fit and I could always kind of get away with it. But 
that was something I wanted to acknowledge, but also ask you about. I mean, how do you feel the fashion industry responds to this kind of thing? Because I know for me personally, it doesn't matter how big the clothes they make are, it doesn't matter how many, how size inclusive they are, I know that that wouldn't have solved my problem because my problem was about I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. And the fashion industry was, the sort of fashion element was secondary to it. But I know that for some people it can feel like different. Like I wasn't comfortable in my own skin, but some people are really comfortable in their own skin. And so their issue with the fashion industry is slightly different, no less legitimate obviously, but everybody comes at it from a different angle and from a different place. And so that was just something that I've been pondering over the last 12 hours as I have been unable to sleep. And also unable to find anything delightful to watch on television to sort of make me fall asleep. Um, so that's, that's the thing that I wanted to acknowledge and talk about in this episode. And I've probably been quite clunky about it, but based on this, it would be great to sort of hear some more thoughts and also maybe turn this into a, a wider episode of the podcast, a longer episode of the podcast, to really talk about how it can feel to feel excluded because of how you look. And it happens on so many scales. Fashion is just one of the things where it can show up. And it's just definitely one I can relate to. And yesterday was a sort of wonderful experience because I, somebody styled me, I told them my clothes size. I wasn't, I knew I wasn't lying when I told them what my clothes size was, which I've done many, many times before. And everything did fit, and that genuinely was new and wonderful and exciting. But it did sort of churn up those feelings of, oh, I remember what it used to be like. And it's not, it's not a happy or pleasant place to be if you have those issues around your body or around how you want to present yourself to the world. Things have moved on 100%. But I just wonder whether I'm of that generation, perhaps, or at that age where I'm struggling to move on with the movement because it's still so personal for me. So please let me know uh, what you think. And we can turn this into a bigger conversation on the show, I think, because it is relevant based on the messages that I received yesterday when I posted the reel of all my outfits. It is definitely something that is on people's minds and we should talk about. I should probably put on some mascara and then get out of here and get some fresh air, shouldn't I? So um, hold that thought, I'll be back in two seconds. Final thing is just to use this gorgeous yellow powder. Look at that. Um, to just set things. I'm only going for a walk. You know that all that's gonna happen on a Sunday when I'm feeling tired is a walk and some coffee and maybe one, two or three podcasts. What a lovely little Bobby Brown haul. Perfectly chosen items as well. Thank you so much to the team at Bobby Brown Reading for picking those out. They're lovely. I will be wearing this constantly, this lip gloss. What is it called again? Love Letter. What a brilliant name for a lip gloss. Anyway, obviously, slight ramble, lots of different things to discuss and have been discussed. Help me pull them all together into something more linear. Let me know, like comment below, let me know what you think, how you feel, because I would love to hear from you.